The Volkswagen Golf GTI has long been one of the best options for keen drivers. But what if you're after a European hatch that's got a little bit of extra spice that isn't the Golf? What are some of the alternatives and how do they stack up against the benchmark in this segment? Taking on the Volkswagen Golf GTI, we have the Peugeot 308 GT and the Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV. And here to help us is Alistair, who contacted Car Advice with the question, if I don't want to follow the GTI crowd, what other sporty hatchback options are out there? So Alistair, tell us, why don't you want the benchmark in this segment, the GTI? Oh, it's not that. I've always had a soft spot for Peugeots. I owned a 205 GDI as my first car. And as a car enthusiast, I've always been intrigued about driving an Alfa Romeo, so I can't wait to give it a go. Well, you're not really a car person until you've owned an Alfa anyway, right? So let's get started in the GTI and we'll give that a crack. All right, cool. Right, so we know we're in a Golf GTI because we have the, the trademark tartan seats and we've got the golf ball styled gear lever as well. This is a base model, so it's got no options. Uh, the price is $41,990 plus your on-road costs. Uh, that gives you a two litre, uh, four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine that produces 162 kilowatts and 350 newton metres of torque, which isn't too bad for a car this size. And uh, I've got to say, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds awesome. Inside the cabin, you've got premium materials, which is what makes this car so appealing. So you've got the soft touch plastics. We have a 5.8 inch uh, color touchscreen. Arguably, this is the worst feature of the car, just because it's low resolution. Uh, it's sometimes a bit fiddly to use, and it, and it just isn't befitting of the rest of the stuff in the car, which is a bit disappointing. You have the driver select system as well, which allows you to change engine, suspension, and steering settings at the push of a button. So you have five different modes to choose from. Uh, what are your thoughts on the back? Yeah, it looks good. I've got a three-year-old boy, so I'm gonna have to put a booster seat in whatever yeah, right. car I choose. Fantastic. And it looks pretty comfortable. I think I can fit back there quite reasonably. Yep, and you reckon he'd like the colours? He'd love the tartan, I think oh, it'd be quite fun. Yeah. Right, we've had enough time in the GTI. What if we hop into the, uh, the Peugeot 308 GT? Sounds good. Okay, so we're in the Peugeot 308 GT, and uh, first things first, it's not quite a Golf, is it? Yeah, I think you're right, Paul. It's pretty French in here. Yeah, French is probably the best way to put it. Uh, it makes less power and less torque than the GTI, and it's a full second slower to 100. So we have to remember that it's not a GTI, as in the Peugeot GTI, that's still coming. Uh, it also uses less fuel, 10% less, which is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, in terms of the interior, we've got a great uh, colour touchscreen here, it's 9.7 inch. Manages all of your functions from nav through to your climate and also uh, the rest of the critical car functions. But in terms of things that I don't like, this steering wheel, it's great with, with the size, but it's impossible to see the speedometer. Like, I mean, you, you just don't know how fast you're driving. Did you find the same thing when you were driving? I did, yeah. Definitely cut off my line of sight across the dashboard. Yep. Um, but I love the space. Like, the seats are super comfy, yep. and I love the massage function in, in both the driver and passenger seat, and I reckon there's enough room in here for the little one in this booster seat. Yep, fair enough. Well, I think uh, the best thing to do now is for us to go uh, to Italy and see what uh, the Italians have on offer. Can't wait. So last but not least, we're behind the wheel of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV. This is the Italian flavour that we're trying to add to this comparison. It produces the most power out of the bunch. Uh, it's also the quickest, 0 to 106 seconds, which is quicker than the Golf. It's also a little bit more dearer than the Golf, but that's because it comes with a six-speed dual-clutch gearbox. It also has the biggest claim to fame with its engine from the pint-sized supercar, the Alfa Romeo 4C. What are your thoughts on the interior? Yeah, I like it. Um, I, are these Leather bucket seats are pretty comfortable. Looks quite tight in the back there for the little man, but yep. um, I'm sure we can make it work. Well, look, in terms of tech, we've got a six and a half inch color touchscreen here that does your radio, nav, and so forth. Uh, there's no reversing camera, which is disappointing, and this steering wheel is humongous. It's like it's been taken out of a bus, and it's, it's hard when you jump out of that Peugeot, which has a tiny little thing into this. So uh, I'm keen to see how this goes on the track. Uh, I reckon we need to find out which one is quickest. Yeah, great. Well, that was interesting, but we are at a racetrack. So while Alistair plays with the back seats of these cars, we're going to set some lap times with the help of our tamed... No, 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 Paulie, racing. just give me the keys, it's Driver. fine. Okay.
Right, so it's not very scientific, but uh, Dave's lobbing these cars around the track now. And we're going to start at this point right here using uh, this guy. So here he comes. Bang. Away he goes. So straight away, you can hear that uh, Volkswagen is making a lot of, uh, lot of noise and it's, it's getting around fairly quickly by the looks of it. So from here, that Golf is looking really impressive. It's sitting flat. Uh, it sounds amazing. I mean, what are you thinking from what you see here? Well, it's incredible how well it's sticking to the road. Even from up here, you can just see it right in the middle. It's taking the corners really nicely. And yeah, you're right, it sounds amazing. And it's doing what a hot hatch should. It looks composed. You know, it, it looks like you could jump in that car, start having fun and not have a worry about anything. So here he comes now on the start-stop line. This is our benchmark time. Okay, so that's one minute and seven seconds. So Pretty that's good. the time to beat. I think next up we have the Peugeot 308 GT. Here he comes now for his uh, flying pass. Okay, and he's often racing in the Peugeot 308 GT. So this is the, the car that doesn't have as much power, it doesn't have as much torque, but it uses less fuel. So it is uh, the more conservative option, I guess you could say. Yeah, great. So there's a lot of tyre noise coming from that Peugeot and it doesn't look like it's going as fast, does it? No, although it seems to be sitting pretty well on the road, just yeah. looking at it going through those corners. Um, probably not as solidly as the Golf did, yeah. but it still looks fantastic. Like it's setting a pace uh, and he's about to come across the finish line here. It's actually not looking too bad. Uh, I suspect he's going to be within earshot of that Golf. This is pretty impressive actually. So we'll stop the timer there. 1 minute 8.8. So 1.8 second difference for, for a car that's meant to be a full second slower to 100. Uh, now it's time for the for the fastest of the lot, uh, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV. Okay, so the Alfa, as we know, is the fastest and most powerful car here. And Dave's about to set his running lap, and away he goes. Yeah, it sounds pretty throaty, doesn't it? Straight off the bat, that is making a lot of noise. There's also a lot of tyre noise as well, so I think with that added pace, it's, it sort of makes a lot of noise altogether. So that thing looks seriously fast, like it is It is absolutely moving. In fact, it's going so fast that when he slams the brakes on, he's activating all the emergency signals. Um, and, it, and it sounds incredible as well. I think this has the best note of the three, right? Yeah, I love the look of the, on the road. And uh, yeah, I think it's that throaty noise is really, really cool. I mean, it's sitting so flat. So here he comes now, he's about to pass the line. It's gonna be close. Wow. That is very interesting. So uh, let's head back to the pits and have a look at how all three of these cars compared. Okay, good. Right, so price and features aside, we really want to know how these three performed on the track. I think you'd be surprised to hear that the Alfa Romeo was the fastest by a full half a second. And uh, next was Golf, uh, half a second slower than the Alfa, and then Peugeot, a second slower than the Golf. And I was thinking that one might be a lot worse than it was. So with all this in mind, are we sort of veering here towards the Golf, or what are your thoughts on, on the result? Yeah, crunch time. Well, I've really enjoyed the experience of driving all three of them, and uh, I definitely hadn't considered uh, an Alfa Romeo at this type of level. But um, despite the kind of uh, nostalgic feeling of the Peugeot, I'm going to have to lean back to where I was potentially considering was at the Volkswagen. The GDI was just too good, it's too good, and too much fun. Well, there you have it. Despite some very healthy competition from the French and the Italians, the Volkswagen Golf GTI has taken out the win today. If you've got any questions for us, head to caradvice.com.au like Alistair did and shoot them through.